what I like and don't like about Sparks of Hope. And we'll start by me just giving a general thought out opinion on this compared to the only game I think it's fair to compare it to Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle and the associated DLC, right? This is a sequel, but it's a sequel that doesn't really care that the first game exists. And I find the fact that it doesn't care that the first game exists to be a little bit unfortunate. Not because the changes to the gameplay are negative, and we'll get into that, but because I'm not sold that Sparks of Hope is a better game than Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Now, that doesn't mean it's still not a very good game, and not one that I didn't thoroughly enjoy, but it definitely is a game that I might prefer the original more. That being said, let's talk about Sparks of Hope itself. So first off, it took me just over 20 hours or so to get through the main quest in the game. There is much more gameplay to do that. I would say if you are 100%ing this game, I think it says I'm somewhere around the 60, 67% completion. You guys see it on screen right now. I do think that this is probably about a 30 hour game. Now it can get even longer. There are three difficulty settings. I did about half the game on difficult, half the game on average, and then I did the very ending on easy. I went back and replayed the ending since then on more difficult settings just because I wanted to make sure that I actually saw the ending of the game. and before I talked about it, because I can already talk about how difficult the fights are. I could talk about the challenge. I could talk about some of the unique aspects. The final fight in the game in particular is absolutely wild and every single character is involved in that battle and it is insane. Now, I will say I'm going to try my best not to spoil a whole lot about the game. I don't want to give you a whole bunch of deep dive story details, especially since a large chunk of the story really happens at the end of the game, which is kind of crazy how you can find out little bits and pieces about each planet that you visit. There are five total planets plus a bonus. Well, I want to say a bonus world, but it's a the final area. But in dealing with those stories, you just learn a lot about the individual stories of the characters that live on those worlds. You don't really learn a whole lot about the overarching story. Because, I mean, the game begins where Cursor just shows up and wrecks face and people note, hey, where the heck is Rosalina? That's weird that Rosalina isn't there. And again, I'm not going to give any story spoilers because, yeah, Rosalina plays a pretty big role in the story, as I think almost everyone suspects. After all, this is a game that's crossing over essentially with Mario Galaxy. Now, to just note on a few things that I do want to just kind of draw attention to, I do find the comedy in the game to be quite entertaining. Now, look, if you're not into the rabid style slapstick comedy, maybe this isn't for you, but I honestly thought it was hilarious from the little things you could find in the world to paintings you could find telling the stories of characters. And more than that, just the general comedy of when you complete things in the game. As an example, on every planet, you are collecting this thing called Dark Mess that provides energy to your ship to make it to the next planet and every time you unlock a dark mess depending on who was the lead character in your group of three and remember you can select any three that you want what's funny is <laughs> whoever the lead character is is the one that gets to do a little animation celebration when the dark mess is obtained and i will say so far no surprise rabid peach has my favorite Dark Mess Obtained animation, uh, but I can't really speak much more than that since most of that was in the latter parts of the game and I don't want to dive too deep into the latter half of the game. But when talking about Sparks of Hope, I think it's important to recognize what the game is. It's a tactical RPG. It got a, it did away with the grid system that we usually see in Fire Emblem or we saw in the original Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle game and goes with the more open, free, running around sort of way and that changes combat in a few ways it makes it feel a bit more fluid they added some new abilities and new modes new characters obviously they announced bowser's playable he's not playable from the beginning he's someone that you unlock later in the game and they obviously added these spark abilities which eventually you get to add two sparks to each character and they add different abilities electric attacks or aoe damage attacks area effect attacks they do a lot of different things fire electric water seem to be the big basis 
for all of these attacks, but there's additional ones with extra defense, extra moves, extra things that happen like vamp dash, where when you dash, uh, when you run up to a character and do a dash attack, which is like a slide kick, you end up getting some health back. So there's a lot of interesting ways to build out your roster. And yeah, there's about nine playable characters, and all of them have very different ways that they play. Some of them play very similar to how you felt in Kingdom Battle, where obviously like Rabid Peach is a healer, and uh, Peach herself is more of a defender type. Mario's an all-around. Luigi's a, it really excels at the long-distance stuff. But then you have obviously some new abilities with things like Bowser, uh, where he's, you know, blasting his cannon, or he's got, like, the ability to summon minions, which I think is a really, really cool ability, and one that I love so much that I ended up using Bowser a lot in the second half of the game, uh, just because he was so fun to play with, because he's so different from all of the other characters. Look, Sparks of Hope is not the kind of game that's going to be winning Game of the Year awards. I can tell you that right now. It, it, it probably won't even be the best game that came out on Switch this year. We, we have other masterpieces out there, like Xenoblade Chronicles 3, with the upcoming Bayonetta 3. Obviously, we have Pokemon, Pokemon Legends Arceus earlier this year as well. So I'm not sitting here going to say that this game deserves to be up in the pantheon of the almighty games. But overall, I had a really damn good time with Sparks of Hope. And I think that's the general takeaway I want you guys to have, is that this game is a lot of fun. And it's not meant to be taken super serious. And I'm not really sure what I expected, because they mentioned they had a much larger team making this game. So I really wasn't sure what that meant. I wouldn't say the game is any longer for it, but I would say there's a lot of polish. As an example, one thing that happens in this game that never happens in the prior one are puzzles. There are puzzles everywhere. There's essentially dungeons all throughout the game. It's crazy. And you're a lot of them are block pushing puzzles. Some of them are just figure out things or find hidden objects, but all of it is crazy. There's even these riddle aspects in each one of the dungeons and I'm calling them dungeons because that's basically what they are. They, it, it, guys, it adds an element of Zelda, and if you're going to tell me you're going to mix Zelda with Mario plus Rabbids, that obviously makes me pretty excited. And I really enjoyed these puzzle aspects. Obviously, in the context of making a review, I was trying to slam through things as fast as I could. And one thing that I don't think a lot of reviewers talk about when they're doing that is you're not playing the game the way you normally would. Guys, I would normally not drop 30 hours into a game in a single week like this at least the way that i did it maybe i would have did it naturally but i wouldn't have been progressing at the pace that i was as i was concerned about getting through the game to make the review this is something that i think a lot of reviewers that get early copies aren't open about they don't let you know that this isn't actually the normal way you play it, and so it affects your experience with the game and in this case a game that i feel is meant to be slower paced a lot of these puzzles a lot of these riddles a lot of 100 percenting the game and, and getting all the collectibles all of this is meant to be something that takes time that you enjoy at a leisurely pace and as i'm sitting there trying to slam it it obviously creates a little bit of frustration where you're working against the game's mechanic to bum rush and and just get through everything as fast as possible and get enough experience in different aspects that it ends up painting a weird thought process of man that was kind of tedious man that was kind of annoying when in general when you slow it down which i have done today playing a little bit uh now that i've got all i needed done for the review I've noticed that I'm actually enjoying those aspects more now that I'm stepping away from that bubble of I need to slam through the game, I need to slam through the game, I need to slam through the game. Now that I'm stepping away from that, I'm actually finding these aspects much more enjoyable than I did in my original written review. So overall, the big takeaways are the Sparks of Hope is really damn good. It may or may not be better than the original game that's going to come down to a lot of personal preferences and taste. It has a lot of polish, has a lot of Zelda-like puzzles that are really exciting. Each planet is utterly fantastic. In fact, tonight, you know, if you guys are watching this review the day it was published on October 17th, we actually had a live stream at 8 p.m. Central that is going to deal with a lot of aspects. We're going to, to go through a giant Q&A. You guys can ask any questions you want about this game. I'm allowed to answer pretty much anything what I can't do is show you anything beyond World 3. We're still under an NDA. So even in this review, I couldn't show anything beyond World 3. That's why I had to be not careful about talking about the second half of the game besides spoilers, but more so worried about 
showing aspects of it, but I will be able to show you things from the first three planets uh, tonight. So, you know, we can go through some of the examples we're talking about here during this review of some of the side quests and the Zelda stuff. A lot of the story stuff I've already done. So the good news for you guys is it's not going to really be a spoiler stream because all the story stuff pretty much already happened in these three worlds because I'm not going to start a new file for you guys. I feel like there's a bit of a fluff at the beginning, a bit of a slow start, but it's a needed slow start as it slowly introduces how to play this game to new players. And games have to do that, right? You have to consider new player bases. But yeah, I'm, I'm look, the payoff for the story, I will say, is uh, incredible expected in some regards but also surprising i again i can't spoil much because i don't want to ruin the game and ruin the experience for those of you that are going to play but that final showdown with cursa and look we know it's cursa because cursa has been in all the trailers my oh my oh my it might be my favorite battle in mario plus rapids ever between either of the games and that's saying something since i heavily enjoyed the musical battle in the first uh, mario plus rabbit's kingdom battle but to have something top that and top that in the way that this battle does it is utterly incredible and i highly suggest when you're doing this battle please don't skimp out and do it on easy mode i would say play it on the difficult setting or average if you're having a problem with it look this game is intended to be played on the average difficulty and you can tell because there were even some battles i struggled here in average but when you're playing on difficult look guys it's a strategy game and it's going to require the right team in every battle it's going to require the right strategy in every battle and expect to fail a lot when you're playing on the difficult setting because while you might plow through the first couple of worlds once you get to world three four and five things get so much more difficult uh, that you can't just pick your favorite party members and go. You're actually going to have to pay attention to what sparks you have. You're going to have to pay attention to what level your sparks are because you can level them up by feeding them little star bits that were from Mario Galaxy. Uh, dude, this is, this is a lot of fun. And it is something that I'm going to be continuing to play at least for a little while here as... I kind of want to 100% this game, and I wanted to do 100% for the review, but it became pretty obvious early on. Plowing through something for a review wasn't going to get me to the 100% status I wanted, but my opinion isn't going to change whether I 100% it or not, because I get it. I get what this game is. I get how enjoyable it is. Uh, as for any negative aspects to it, look... It's not going to be a game for everyone. I don't really have anything in particular negative to say. There is one weird thing, and I, I harp on this a lot, and I'm probably the only one who cares. The Rabbids have voice acting in this game, which is very strange to me since the Rabbids don't talk in any other medium. And the voice acting isn't even full voice acting. It's partial voice acting, and partial voice acting, as you guys will know, has always bothered me. I don't like when partial voice acting is a thing. But what are you going to do? I also think that the voice acting, despite it feeling weird because the rabbits don't talk in any other medium, actually works. Uh, I, I like the voice acting. I will say there are two fully voiced characters, uh, that being Beepo, your little robot companion, and Genie, which is a robot companion that Beepo created that's supposed to be an AI for your ship. And they have a lot of banter throughout that's utterly hilarious as they start to form human emotions and do these weird things it, it it it's honestly very clever and whoever wrote the script and did the voice acting for those characters did an utterly fantastic job uh there's some of the more entertaining aspects of the game just listening to their banter it's it's really wild anyways guys uh, you know i'm not going to give this a rating i'm just going to say should you buy this game if you enjoyed the first one absolutely if you thought the first one looked cool but you missed out on it and you think this one looks cool as well absolutely if you're not into strategy rpgs then yeah probably not for you 